Hey guys, we're back. We're back with 100% energy now and ready to rock this world. Ready to get this thing into a very nice position. So let's go here. Oh, not that one. That one right here. And uh, so uh, someone asked in the comments, what happened yesterday? Why were you not uh, tired? I, I think I'd mentioned it, but um, all of my schools or all of the schools where I teach started at, like last week and this week was the last like starting date. So yesterday was the first day in which I had to teach like pretty much like eight hours straight. And then after that, I, of course, have to go home and uh, do all of the uh, home duties and then come back and, and record. So I was really, really tired yesterday, but uh, now my my sleep cycle is, is good again. So thank you, thank you guys for, for asking. So we have this guy right here. We finished with the balloons. I want to do a little bit of cleanup because if you remember, we had this little issues right there on these triangles. And uh, we have a couple of other issues. So I'm going to turn on symmetry. And I'm just going to start smoothing this out. Just smooth. Dynamic again. And smooth again. And dynamic again. And that should pretty much solve the solve the issue here. Now we're going to start carving. We're going to start using our clay buildup to start carving out the, the different elements. And the problem with hard surface stuff, well, not the problem, one of the, the tricky things is if we want hard surface to look like hard surface, we really need to have a lot of uh, geometry. So if we take a look at the reference, you can see that there's not a lot of... Um, uh, let's say there, there's not a lot of damage, like all of the corners are slightly chipped. There's like a big chunk of damage right about here. I can see another big chunk of damage right about here and this one right here, a little bit here and there. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna follow some of the, of the indications here and, and get this uh, close to what we want. So here we go. I'm of course gonna turn off uh, symmetry. And what I'm gonna do, since we already have a nice uh, geometry here, I can actually increase the dynamic just a little bit here. I'm gonna say 1200. So we're gonna go from, um, yeah, 700, uh, 7,000, 700,000 to a million. And uh, now let's just, let's just start uh, carving. So there's a lot of different ways in which you can do it. I'm actually gonna use the clay buildup at first. So I'm just gonna start like carving here a little bit of a, of a border damage. You usually don't want your corners to be like completely flat if you can avoid that because that also makes it a little bit difficult for the uh, normal maps to work properly. So there's like, a, I'm not sure if this is a chip. I'm going to make it like a chip. So I'm just going to start like, like really going in here. There's one brush that's actually really, really good for stone. I'm not sure if I've shown you this one before, but here in the brush section, there's one called the mallet. Mallet, mallet, mallet. Where are you? Mallet. And it's this one mallet fast. So it's a little bit more aggressive than the, than the clay buildup. And you get this like very sharp, like square, squarish lines. Very, very cool. So that's a nice section there. Of course, trim dynamic to just like flatten a little bit on those areas and make sure that it's not like super weird. Uh, I'm gonna go back to my mallet here. Let's just like remove a little bit of, it's like a hammer, the mallet's like a hammer. And then we can combine it with the, with a clay builder for instance to get like a little bit more of, a, of an actual damage. And then again, go into the mallet and then see how it gets this very like nice, sharp little lines there. Pretty cool, right? I think, oh, <laughs> I thought it was, I had the music on. I normally listen to music when I'm working, but I have the channel turned off so that we don't get any copyright strikes. There we go. So now there's a little bit of a damage over here. So again, very simple. I'm not really concerned about like the high frequency detail right now. We could add a little bit of high frequency detail. And the reason why I'm not concerned about that one is we're gonna be having, or we're gonna have that uh, sort of like damage on the texture later on on the on the Substance Painter file. So here, I, I actually do wanna like, let's carve in here a little bit more. Now, I, I would like to go a little bit higher in subdivision levels, but I don't wanna do Dynamesh because it, it, it becomes really difficult to manage. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off Dynamesh since I know that I'm not gonna be remeshing anything or at least not uh, uh, soon. And I'm just gonna add a division like divide and we're gonna go to four millions now. So now when we do this sort of like damage and stuff, it's gonna be a lot more noisy, which is uh, where you're going for, right? Sort of like very like noisy carving here like eroded we want this thing to be very very organic at first and uh yeah it's just a matter of like adding a couple of nicks and necks here and there i'm not sure if that's the right word like i can see a a big chip over here i'm gonna use my trim dynamic now to create like a 
like a big chip there. We can use the mallet fast as well. He has like a like a hammer. It's pretty cool, the mallet fast. Where else do we have? There we go. Like on this side, we're pretty much missing the whole corner. So I'm just going to start like pushing this thing in. Uh, I think I'm going to use string dynamic on this one. String dynamics, of course, a little bit more aggressive. And then we clay build up just add a little bit of noise there on the surface. So it looks uh, it looks chipped. Now the big chunk over here. So so this area right here is where the big damage is going to be <laughs> appearing. Uh, and for this, I'm just going to like, again, go with the clay build up. Start just like, like really, really, really going in here. Now I do have a couple of brushes. I, I can't really share them with you because I bought them a while, a while ago and they're licensed. So, uh, but this one's are for like rock damage. There's a couple of ones that I can show you where to get. Let me just one second. So uh, if we go here in the light box and then the um, brushes, I have this, the uh, the rock brushes. So there's this guy called uh, Orb. Well, not it's not a guy, of course, but if you look for Orb rock brushes here in, in Google, you got this guy, Michael Vicente. And uh, he has this this ones right here. The only thing is this, they're a little bit too stylized uh, for what we're going for here. This is a little bit more realistic. So they're gonna, not gonna match, but they're great, 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 great tools uh, for, for you to have. And I have this ones right here, which as you can see are uh, a little bit more like mar marble damage and stuff. So like this one right here, I can just like literally project it there. We're gonna get a very nice effect. And I also have another pack, this marble damage, which I really, really like because it's more like, a, like the actual, uh, breaking of, of, of parts like this one right here for instance and you can see like the like the sections of the stone right on the on the element so yeah i mean alphas are going to be great and they're going to give us a little bit of an extra detail there which is always always useful so something like that but it's not necessary we can always uh play around with the like with the mallets i was showing you here and with the uh clay build up see how the mallet gives us this very like jaggedy effect, jaggedy edge effect, which is really cool. I'm gonna soften there, use clay build up to just fill in the hole. That, the reason I like the mallet is is you can get some very like sharp lines on the on the border of where the where like the stone is chipping, and it makes it look a little bit more realistic. There we go. I'm using clay build up here to, to carve in like the border and just like fade all of this in and out. There we go. So now you can see how we got that very nice, like big chunk of damage right here, which is actually a little bit bigger. It actually goes all the way to like the triangle here. So I'm just gonna increase it. I'm going very, very softly here on the, on the rock to create this sort of effect. There we go. And it does seem to be missing like a big chunk here. So I'm just gonna trim dynamic this and like damage it a little bit. I, I usually wanna have a little bit of damage pretty much everywhere. Like it, it wouldn't make sense to have like a lot of damage in some places and then be like completely like computer straight everywhere else. So for instance, on this side, I am also seeing a lot of damage and it's just a matter of Having fun. This is the, the, the cool part about this. Here's where also like more often than not, the art director will be or will come around you and say like, hey, you know what? Like add a little bit more here and more here. Even if the concept doesn't have as much damage, uh, people will, will like how it's looking and they will ask you to um, to go a little bit like above and beyond of what you have on the concept. So there we go. Let's go there. there a little bit of damage there for instance here since we don't have the triangles i'm gonna add like a like a very big uh like a very big chunk is missing like that textures are gonna play a great uh deal or a very big role in this thing later on this is very important that we that we do it the best possible here 
So yeah, um, it's just a matter of going through the motions here and using this same sort of like uh, technique to to get a nice little, little detail overall. Now, one thing I am going to do is I'm going to turn on symmetry. And if you remember when we were doing this, we got a little bit of a, of a bad like line over here on the on the carving on the sides. So here's where we can use our uh, symmetry to just like manually uh, fix that a little bit there. So just make sure it looks a little bit better. Uh, now I'm going to show you one trick here that's going to save us a little bit of work. It's going to add a little bit more noise to the whole thing uh, without making it super difficult. Uh, I'm going to go into the surface options. I'm going to turn on noise. And what noise will do, as you can see, it can add noise to the whole thing. Now I'm going to make the noise a little bit bigger, so it's a little bit more extreme. And I'm going to change the curve so that we have like very flat areas. And, this, and then some areas that are like uh, not as flat, right? So I'm going to change the strength here because I want to create some like holes in certain areas. I don't want to get as much noise though. So, so I want to try and keep this like as flat as possible. Let's remove the strength because, I, because the, the stone seems to be very, very smooth, very soft. So I'm going to play around and see if I can get this to, to where I want something like this. And then let's see if we can increase, like, like get some, there we go. See how we get those very nice, like a small, uh, dimples here and there and we still keep it like a very soft surface I'm just gonna hit ok and you can see how we get all of this elements uh, I think we can reduce the scale though there we go there we go see how we get that very nice stone looking effect I'm just gonna hit apply to mesh and that little noise there should be applied it's very it's gonna be super subtle subtle it's probably a little bit difficult to see here but it's there you can see the little dots there because again most of the work I want to do it uh, in textures later on so I'm going to turn off symmetry again, use my clay buildup and just keep on carving on certain areas. So for instance, here it's just a, it's just giving a little bit of a, you know, variance to the thing. Like I don't want everything to be again, perfectly symmetrical. Trim dynamic also works really well just to add a couple of like, maybe like a big hit over here, maybe like a lance or a rock hit that area uh, at one time. And again, we can keep a lot of like very straight lines, but I want to have uh, some of this like uh, breaks in, in silhouette as well like that one right there let's add another one over here back here since back here it's it's not an area that's i'm not saying it's not important but it's an area that we're not looking at as much then like adding some heavy heavy hits every now and then uh, might be a good idea careful there we don't want to push a surface from one side to the other so here one thing we can do is just mask work on an area and then just unmask and mask this area work over there because that looks very wrong so let's let's make this a, a bigger hole there you go there we go there we go there we go so we have a rather big hole over there now i'm not actually i'm not quite convinced about that one the reason i'm not convinced is because if we're gonna duplicate these guys and have like several of them on a like on a on an altar or something we want to keep like details like those where they're very very identifiable to the to the minimum amount of possible because those are the things that people are gonna very easily see now you can see that we do have this line right here where the like uh, writings uh, start so this one right here, let me show you a quick way in which we can do it. I'm just gonna grab this whole thing here, which is uh, roughly about there, I would say. Yeah, that seems about right. Probably a little bit more. So I'm just gonna create a mask here. Invert the mask, and I'm gonna go into the formation, and I'm gonna use the inflate option, but I'm gonna do it in reverse. Or actually, I think it would be better to go on the other one and just like uh, inflate it just a tad bit. Like that, just that. Just a small little simple there. As you can see, we're going to have that nice line over there. And everything else should be exactly the same. Like we shouldn't have any like weird changes or anything. Uh, we just added that little line there, which is going to allow us to have the uh, this uh, like inscriptions later on. So on this one, you can see that there's a little bit of damage on this side. There we 
we go. On the rock, a little bit of damage. There we go. There's a little bit of damage on this side as well. Like on all of this border. So let's just hit it with a little bit of uh, a little bit of damage all around. And then we have, you can see here, like some, well, actually there's like a very heavy damage over here. Uh, which I I kind of like nailed with this one right there, so I'm just gonna make it a little bit sharper. Again, this is something I would probably go against if this is gonna be a modular piece that we're gonna use a lot. But since this is a single piece, or maybe we just like two of them, uh, yeah, we can get away with this, like a like a small hit over there on the on the stone. Now, some of you might be asking, do we need to add the um, this hieroglyphs right here? We could. There's an option and we could do it. However, uh, since I'm not sure what the texture resolution is going to be just yet, I think I'm going to wait until the texture. And I want to show you a nice little trick that we can use in Substance to, to get that in there as well. So I think that's pretty much it. Like if you take a look at this thing, it's looking very good. I'm going to see if I have any, like a couple of alphas here that I can use to give this a little bit more, you know, oomph to the whole thing. So for instance, like... Uh, like this one right here, like this kind of like shallow spider web sort of uh, sort of effect. There we go. Like those sort of like cracks in, in a couple of areas. I think those those really help sell the whole thing. Like maybe a, like a slightly bigger crack over here, like on this area where we have the hit. I will definitely expect some like fragmentation to to be happening over there. Yeah. So just small small little details here and there. Let's change the alpha. Let's grab um, like this one right here. Careful on the on this sort of sides where where things are moving in different directions. There we go. Now again, I don't want to go overboard on this thing. I don't want to go overboard on this thing because uh, there's a lot of work to be done on the texture side. You can see there's a lot of very nice gradients, uh, pretty much everywhere. Now we are missing this guy right here. This uh, like little steps I forgot to add them, and and they're important. So let's go down here, and let me add a little bit of damage to the base. Since the base is where people are gonna be like uh, walking and pushing, I would definitely expect the base to have a little bit more damage than what you would expect. But again, it shouldn't be that much. So let me grab uh, again, like the, like a couple of disc cracks, maybe this one. There we go, that one looks good there. So one over here. Uh, it's a little bit uh, like deep, but um, it works. And then over here, let's change the alpha. Let's grab a different one, like um, this one, maybe. So that's not bad. It's a little bit too deep. So I'm gonna just make it uh, smoother on the on the on the intensity there, so we get some some scarring on the on the thing, but it's not like super intense. There we go. And that's it. That's the that's the high poly. That's our high poly ready to go into the retopology process. So uh, I'm going to stop the video right here, guys. We're going to leave it here just with the high poly finished. And uh, we're going to be taking a look at the um, at the retopology process now uh, or next. Now, here's here's one thing I actually forgot. Before I forget, uh, we have we want this little steps, steps right? So here's a, a hack I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to sub tool. I'm going to duplicate this whole thing. I'm going to isolate one of them. Dynamic solo, this one, and I am gonna hide everything but the little step, the initial step that we have there. There we go. So now we have this hole. I'm gonna say delete hidden. We of course need to delete the geometry, so delete lower, delete hidden, and I'm gonna dynamish. So now we have this step, right? It's just like the, like the basic block. Uh, let's get rid of the dynamic solo. Grab this guy, and I'm gonna use my um, my gizmo here. I'm gonna bring this up, make it smaller. Uh, on the reference, I see that we have uh, two steps, two small steps. So I can make it smaller like this. 
and they're on the back side of this thing. You can see this. Like that's the front, so this is the back, so something like this. Definitely smaller, so something like that. There we go. And then I'm just gonna duplicate again. Make it smaller again. Thinner. Bring this guy to the back like this. And now you can see that they're from the middle all the way to the back. And they do leave a space, so probably I'm just gonna get rid of this. Scale them down even move further. And then move the pivot point back here and start scaling back like this. See that? And there we go. So this right here that you're seeing is a perfectly fine high poly. Like from here, we can get our high poly like clean. I'm actually gonna move this or just scale this just because it looks weird on the on the back side. I think it looks better. Yeah, it looks way better. It does seem to be flush to the, to the outside though, which is weird. So let's just flush it a little bit more. Grab this guy and flush a little bit more. I am gonna make an artistic decision here to, to keep this guy slightly smaller like this. So I want this to be like some sort of like steps or something. And there we go. Some of you might say, well, don't we need to have this whole thing as a single object? Yes, eventually we're gonna export it as a single object, but our high poly right now can leave us a complete object without any uh, sort of issue. So yeah, that's it guys. Let me know if you like the way this is going. I think we're in a very good position. The high poly is ready. The next couple of videos are might be a little bit, <laughs> they might be a little bit slow because I'm gonna show you the traditional like um, actual like uh, re-topology techniques and uh, we're gonna have to, to do some tricks. But before we do that though, I don't wanna do the arrow D there, which we're missing. And uh, for this, here's where uh, light booleans are also gonna go or help really nicely. So I'm gonna insert a cube here. And I know this is the second time that I'm about to finish the video and we're like, no, 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 just one more thing. You know how I am. I want you guys to get the best possible uh, like knowledge here. So we're just gonna create the shape here, which is the shape that we wanna like uh, perforate. Just about there, it's definitely way thinner. It's like an arrow, so actually, I mean, I, I kind of like this shape though. I mean, we're gonna get the arrow because we're we're we we already have the some of the silhouette there. So we're gonna say, is it say subtraction? Turn on light light polygons, and that's the shape that we're gonna get, which I think looks amazing. So now, since we have a lot of shapes here. And these are also like uh, booleans. We can just hit here or say, I'm going to save this tool before we do anything else. So I'm going to save this as our obelisk number two. And now I'm going to make this a live bolt boolean. So I'm going to say uh, subtool, a boolean, make boolean mesh. Should combine all of this, like subtract the cube that we have on top and, and combine the little, like two little steps. And if things go right, we should have a almost 5 million polygon uh, thing on the top here uh, with... Um, which is going to be ready for the decimation process and all that stuff. But I'm going to leave that for the next one. So that's it. This is the real closing. <laughs> Thank you guys for sticking around. Thank you for all your kind messages. Uh, make sure to leave more messages down there. I love to, to listen from you guys. And I'll see you back tomorrow. Back with Retopology. So that's it. Bye-bye.